Sometimes you want to widen a stereo track so it lives at the end of the speakers or wraps around sounds that are less wide. There are a bunch of ways to do this, and we'll look at a few of them that producers use on a regular basis, regardless of the genre of music. Today, though, we're not talking about double tracking and hard panning, and we're not going to talk about reverb, but other ways to do this. So I've got this short loop to demonstrate this with. We'll be focusing on the synth track. We're going to widen this using several methods. Let's take a listen. So we're focusing on the synth track. Uh, let's solo it, take a listen to it. Let's turn off a couple things so we can hear this better. We'll turn off the side chaining. And the verb's already off, so we're good. The first way I want to demonstrate is using a plugin called Wider. It's a standard in the industry. It does the job really well. This is actually a new version of it at this point. So we'll turn it on, take a listen to the track as it is. And it does have some stereo movement in this track, right and left side. It's, it's different on the right and the left. So we, we've got a stereo track to work with, which is good. So what I'm first going to do, I'm going to bypass the low frequencies. I don't want to widen those. So let's pull that up maybe to around 150, something like that. And then I'm going to widen simply by dragging this out right here. So you'll hear it move into the right and left speaker as, especially as we get to this far end of it. Probably don't want to use that much. Maybe around here will sound good. I use this plugin quite frequently, especially when I'm doing uh, EDM work. So this is a great plugin. Check it out. It's free. So another way to do this is to use another plugin called Imager. It's made by Isotope Imager. There's a free version of this, but this one comes from Ozone 9. So it's a paid for version. It probably has some more advanced features than the free one. So we'll turn this on. And the advantage here is all the controls. So I've got four different bands of frequencies I can work with. The lows, uh, higher lows or mids, some mids, high mids, and then some highs. So if we look at it right now, we've got an imager that shows us what's going on. Now if I pull all of these down, we're going to get a mono signal. It's all going to be right in the center, and it's good to see what this looks like. So that's dead center. It doesn't have any width at all. So we'll put these back. All right, so if I want to widen this, the first thing I'm going to do actually is not widen the base. The lower stuff I don't want to do. Then I might widen this one up a bit. Widen this one. and widen the high end. And if you've watched the imager as it goes, you can see what's going on with this. So with this plugin, I get to choose the frequency bands that I'm going to widen and how much I'm going to do of each one. Typically, I'm going to widen the higher frequencies much more than the lower ones. The next technique for widening has been used forever. It's using delay. So we're going to open up Echo Boy, which is my delay of choice. 
And the way we do this is we set up a short delay that has offset between right and the left. In other words, the delay to the right and the left is not the same. They're slightly off, and it's typically a very short delay. And you'll notice this one's at 11.4 milliseconds. That's a very short delay. We'll turn this on. And let's t just take a listen to the preset. So if we look deeper into this, we can open up the tweak right here and look inside. And what's happening is we have a width dial and an offset, and we can manage how wide this is going to sound. Now we can do this technique manually if we want to. We can set up a dual delay and we can offset these times just like this is, have very little feedback like it's been set up with a preset, and we can just design it this way with a right and a left. <music> Typically, you're not gonna go above, say, 40 milliseconds. I'm usually below 25 on either side when I'm trying to do this effect because you don't want it to be a noticeable delay. In other words, you don't want to hear a distinct echo has to sound like the right and the left are playing the same sound, but they're just wide. The last method I want to show you today for widening is going to be using an EQ, and we'll just use the channel EQ inside of Logic. Turn this on. And what we're going to do is use side mode. So typically it's in stereo. We can go down to side only. And so now we're only going to be affecting what happens on the far left and right, essentially. So I'm going to first pull this up. And what I'm doing here is cutting the bass, but only from the sides. It's not cutting it from the middle. It's just taking it out of the sides because I typically don't want to widen my bass out to the sides, not in a huge way anyway. And then if I boost up here, what's going to happen is the high frequencies that I boost are going to be boosted at the ends or at the right and left. Let's turn this off for a second. And on. So what we've done is boost the higher frequencies in the right and left speaker out to the ends, basically, and not in the middle. And that way we've created a widening effect with our sound. It sounds wider left and right. So why would I want to do this? Well, I've got this keyboard in the middle here of this track. And it's somewhat spread out. But what I want to do with this synth is I want to wrap it around the outside of this keyboard. Let this keyboard live a little bit more in the middle than this synth. And this is just a taste thing. This is just a production thing. You don't have to do this. Typically, we leave the bass in the middle. And when we're doing a widening thing, we want to do it with taste. We want to be careful with this because wider is not always better. Just keep that in mind. And we've done somewhat extreme examples today, so we make sure that everyone can hear what it is that's going on. I would probably do it a little bit more tastefully if I'm putting it into a piece of work, into a project. Okay, so let's compare our three methods. This isn't a scientific comparison as the width settings and the amount of the effect will be different in each plugin, but it will give you an idea of what they each have to offer. So first we'll listen to it without any of them on, then we'll go through each one.
So when you feel the need for width, hopefully you now have some plugins and techniques to use. Try it out, let me know what you think. Thank you.